Hi everyone, you're on the John Bojan channel and we're here in Iceland. In this episode, I will tell you about this country, about its culture, about traditions, about people, and show you just incredible places. Although you know, stop, I watched so many videos and indeed the places are beautiful. But for me, it didn't look like a picture of wow. And that Iceland is just kind of incredible was said by everyone as one. So I'm wondering if this is really true or a little bit exaggerated. So I suggest you come with me. I'll tell you the whole truth. Let's explore Iceland together. The land of Sochen Volcano. We have a melted drone where they sell Soviet posters in the markets. Any way you throw it, it's a clear finish. It's horrible. And money relations are built on trust. They give you a check and you just use it to get in. But nobody checks it. It's a strange place all round. Language, let me try to pronounce it. I'm Hud Grimskrik. No. Prices. Three dollars for six eggs. Supermarket food. Oh, what a purse. That's the head. Is Iceland worth the crazy money they're asking for? Is this it? That waterfall I walked two kilometers uphill to? Are there a lot of evil forces here? Trolls once lived here instead of people. Where is the truth and where is the myth? Let's get dressed warmly and go exploring. Did you know that Iceland's tourism boom only began in 2008 and marketing played a major role in it? That's why I've decided to do an unusual issue. Here's the plan. To see in Iceland everything that is hotly recommended to tourists and see if it's true or if the advertising is exaggerating. Reykjavik is a relatively small town by Russian standards. Only 130,000 people live here. This is approximately like Kolomna near Moscow. But due to the huge number of tourists, and there are more than 2 million of them here every year, you will definitely not feel lonely here. I'm going to the heart of the city, the local church, but look at the swings in front of it. They make my heart sink. I think the kids are going to bump heads. Let me try to pronounce it, uh, actually. Actually, it's not really a spell. It's the name of this church here. It's Lutheran. It doesn't really look like a church to me, it looks more like an art object. The church was built last century, but even now it looks futuristic. Imagine how it was perceived back then. Many Icelanders, by the way, still criticize it and call it ugly. The pews in the church are designed in a very interesting way. When the organ is playing, you can sit facing it. But if you remove the supports, you can sit facing the altar. The church is famous not only for its 15-meter mechanical organ, but also for its observation deck overlooking the city and the fjords. We're going to have to go even higher. What a clock, this is cool. You see that monument? It's a gift to the Icelanders from the Americans. You have to buy a ticket at the store in the church. They give you a receipt and you just use it to get in. But nobody checks it. You can just get in line and get in for free. But Icelanders are not like that. They're very law-abiding, so they don't allow themselves to do that.
When you walk around, you notice how many flowers there are here. Perhaps for another country, it's not much, but for the northern nature is very even. By the way, on the street of the city, you can easily meet, say, the mayor of the city or even beer because people are not used to separate themselves here. You see, there are no curtains on the windows. In 2010, the comedian Yong Nar, who is often seen on these streets, became mayor. He was born to a communist firefighter. He suffered from dyslexia as a child and was misdiagnosed with mental retardation. He played in a punk band, moonlighted as a cab driver, went to university but never graduated. Then he worked as a nurse in a psychiatric hospital. He ran for election as a joke and accidentally won for himself. That's a Netflix story. There are plenty of coffee shops in the capital, but you won't find McDonald's or Starbucks. There's no McDonald's or Starbucks on the whole island, but there is a flea market. It's open on weekends. Let's stop by. Maybe my grandmother had a radio like this. Now that's amazing. Any way you throw it, it's a sure thing. That's terrible. Elvis, that's a lot of Elvis. There's probably a record in here somewhere. A very rare one. And probably worth a lot of money. And they don't even know it. And they're selling them. For about two and a half thousand kroner, no. Actually, I wanted to come here to buy something made of black lava. I'll show you these bracelets that, come on, that'll be $20. Uh, listen. Uh, I guess not. Notice how funny the traffic lights are. They're like these cartoon people. Icelanders love traffic lights. They have smiley faces. They have hearts. And in a town in the northwest, they've painted a tridosaurus on the road, especially so that cars would slow down when they saw it, so they don't hit people. I'd like to run a little test. I'm going to analyze the water. I got one of these things. It's pretty cool. 044, 043. It's good. Well, what I have to say is, the water is completely drinkable. And it's even cooler than mountain water. It's also delicious. Hodex, by the way, are very popular around here. And the birds know it. You want some? Good for you. This tent is practically a Michelin place. It's very crowded. And you know why? It's not just for the sausages and the lamb. Former President Bill Clinton sat down here. He said it was the best hot dog in the world. What do you guys think of the Reklavik? In my opinion, without it, the top 10 places to visit in Iceland is definitely impossible. It's a cozy little town with a Scandinavian flavor. I can't say that it's wow, but without the capital city, you can't make an opinion about the country. Well, it's time to do some grocery shopping before the long drive, and I'll just show you the prices in the stores. One of the cheapest supermarkets here is the Chain Bonus. It's easily recognized by the cute little piggy on the sign. Here's what I'm interested in. Eggs. Eggs. 398 crowns for six eggs. 390 crowns? 398 crowns? So, if I'm not mistaken, that's almost three dollars. Three dollars for six eggs. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a very nasty thing. I think this is it. 
Lava. 759 crowns a kilo. Oh my god, you poor thing. That's awful. Meat sweet. It's a holiday specialty. A lamb's head boiled without a brain. It's served with eyes and teeth. Now I understand why Iceland is statistically the number one vegetarian restaurant per capita in Europe. All right. Well, we're all stocked up on groceries. We came out to 23, 200, 331 kroner. That's about 172 euros or dollars. Honestly, I expected the check to be for a bigger sum. The tourist websites claimed that the local stores had a lot of unusual things. Bread made from volcanic ash, blueberry soup, pit steaks. I tried to find all of these things in the bonus, but couldn't. Maybe it's because bonus is a cheap store, or maybe it's all tourist bait. It's not like we don't sell bear meat at the grocery store. Well, here we are at the rental place. Let's take our motorhome friend. Traveling in a motorhome is recommended for two reasons. One, you can save money on hotels. Two, you can sleep at any campground. I'll tell you right away, I couldn't save money. I rented a van on the spot, not in advance. And what usually costs 10,000 rubles for a week, it cost me 20 for one day. But the convenience of the van now will check. I've arrived at my first campground. Tonight will be my first night in an automobile. That's great. And no neighbors. It's perfect. Looks like... There are other neighbors? Ugh! How many of you are here? Maybe we should stay here after all with the gnats? At least the lake's close by. We drove from here. It's horrible! Beasts! Beasts! We had to choose a parking lot farther away from the water. It's not as pretty, but there are no midges. I think... I'm sleeping here. Yes. Buddy! Pie, let me show you how this place works. Every campsite has a toilet and a shower. The toilet is always free, and sometimes you have to pay for a shower, but not always. That's how simple everything looks. But here it's not about beauty, of course, but about availability. Very often in campgrounds there is a kitchen. And here, by the way, is a very good life hack. In campgrounds, when people are already leaving, they can leave different things. For example, here is a direct selection of gas that can be used for cooking. Or... They leave groceries. Economy. And now a master class in turning a car into a bedroom. It'll keep me warm. First, we fold up the chair. Pull out the table, which by the way is included in the kit. Chairs, which are also included. The sleeping area is almost ready. But there's just one problem. It's white night here. There are special curtains for this. They're very convenient to hang. They're magnetized. It's customary to take food with you in the motorhome. Ready-made or those that are easy to prepare. But in Russia, I bought dry rations. I wonder if anyone ever brought them to Iceland. Let's start with set number seven. Okay, what do we have here? Beef meat with greens, beef meatballs, vegetable caviar, liver pate, tender pate, mashed apples, melted cheese, chewing gum, dry cream, coffee, apple jelly. All this stuff for me? Am I gonna eat all this? Probably three days. And it only costs 300 rubles. I'll have enough for two weeks, if not more. Admit it, do you like to take dry rations with you on camping trips? Honestly, write in the comments. I do because I love it.
I've already decided that I like the motorhome concept. So far, one morning, we just couldn't leave the campground. Well, this just keeps getting more and more interesting. Our car won't start. I don't know what to do. It could be the battery, probably the fuse. Looks like we're screwed. It's also raining. At the rental company, you wouldn't believe it. They told us to ask for help at the nearest hotel, and I was hoping they'd come and help. And I'm soaked. I'm soaking wet. This raincoat apparently wasn't designed for this much rain. Our car news. The hotel doesn't have any wires, but they said we can call the farmer. He'll come and charge your car for 200 euros. Can you imagine if our van broke down somewhere in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere? The motorhome, without arguing, has other disadvantages. For example, it's not as comfortable to sleep in as a nice hotel bed. But there are pluses. The experience itself is very unusual. You feel freedom. Wherever you want, there you stay. You can't do that with a hotel. Once a place is booked, you have to go there. So, I'm gonna give the van a big thumbs up for the new experience. Yesterday was like this. My first day in Iceland didn't really impress me. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's very colorful, very juicy. But there's no wow factor. In principle, we have all the same fields. I hope today I'll finally scream with delight. That's what the guidebooks in Iceland promise me when they tell me about this attraction. I'm standing right now in front of the entrance to Kingalea Park. And it's not just a beautiful place, it's literally steeped in history. In ancient times, Iceland's horse roads led here. And that's why the People's Assembly, the Althing, was founded here in the year 930. But my main goal is not just to wander around the park. In the local lake, there's a fault between tectonic plates. It's called Silfra. If you dive in, you can touch Europe and America at the same time. I thought it was going to be this deep, but in fact, well, a river is a river. The rift continues to widen by two centimeters a year, but I didn't dive in because, uh, uh-oh, it's icy. Oh my god, the way they swim in there, I mean, you know, they're in suits, but it's freezing. No, 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 not my thing. Snorkeling can be booked on the spot. You'll be given a suit and mask. People don't swim long because they freeze. I'm freezing without water. Let's go to the waterfall. It's right next door. It's a beautiful waterfall. In the Middle Ages, they used to drown people who were sentenced to death. I've got a sporting interest. Find something in Iceland that makes me say, wow, you know, like in Argentina. Remember when I was just raving at every location? I'm not arguing Iceland is very beautiful. But why is it that everyone, everyone I've watched has said it's just some stunning nature? I haven't seen that yet. Of course, it's very amusing to watch people standing around with their cameras on, with their phones and waiting, waiting for that moment of explosion to happen. And it could happen in 10 minutes. It could happen in two minutes, and there's no warning. Of course, I was standing there with my camera on too. How am I different from people? I came to see the stroke cure. It's the most powerful active geyser in Iceland. Geysers, like volcanoes, can be active or extinct. What's that? But... It happens fast. All right, let's wait for the next one. Well, it can't be a bullet, can it? It's taking a long, long time. He must be gathering his strength to show his full power. 
plan? I'm telling you, he's been preparing his forces. Geyser, whoa. I got goosebumps over how cool that was. By the way, congratulate me in the comments. I've seen all sorts of volcanoes and waterfalls, but this, mind you, was the first geyser I've ever seen. Behind me is Goldfoss Falls. The advertising brochures say that this creation of nature with a roar crashing down will leave no one indifferent. Let's go and see if it's true. It's all wet! It's a good time to check out the driver's way quotes. It's a good time to take a bath. So how's it looking gorgeous? Oh yes, you'll see for yourself. What makes it particularly charming are the sills, the roar. I have to shout to be heard. You can't be indifferent. Listen, I'm gonna tell my friends to come here. And I'm gonna tell you to come too. Because the waterfall is really awesome. I love that you can get up close. I haven't seen that kind of power in a long time. You might think this is the only gorgeous waterfall in Iceland. Well, it's not. This is Skagafoss waterfall. You can see it on every promotional brochure in the country. It's like a calling card. it that the first Viking who lived here supposedly hid gold behind the water wall of the waterfall. Many years later a boy found it. He took the ring in his hands and all the gold evaporated. And supposedly that very ring now lies in a local museum. This is what it looks like. The museum says it's not an ordinary finger ring. It's a ring from a treasure chest hidden by a Viking. It's all about romance. You can also catch rainbows here. I wonder if the third waterfall won't let you down either. To be honest, it's only in Iceland that I can't let go of my phone. And that's because I just can't remember all these Icelandic names. Let's say Seljandlasfos Waterfall. No, Seljandlasfos, that's right. How many times can you say it right? Write it in the comments. The beauty of this waterfall is that you can get behind it. That is to go behind this powerful stream. You have to wear waterproof clothes here anyway because it's very wet. You know, I feel like I've just come out of the foam of the sea. Oh, gross. It's all wet! You have to walk carefully because the rocks are slippery. People, it's gorgeous, it's really beautiful, it's great, it's a really beautiful waterfall. You feel such emotions here, just some kind of power and strength. Travel, just travel. It's the high of life. And here's another famous waterfall that didn't impress me at all. I'll tell you why. And this is it. The waterfall to which I walked uphill for two kilometers. Honestly, I thought it would be more powerful. Remember we saw the unusual Reykjavika church? 
Well, the architect was inspired by this waterfall and combined architecture and nature. And the next place struck me not so much by its beauty, but although I won't say right away, look for yourself. It's the Dedi Falls waterfall. It's called the dirtiest waterfall on the planet. Actually, it's not dirt, it's ash mixed with water. And you could say I'm swimming in a volcano right now. It's also said to be the most powerful and noisy. 600 cubic meters per second. Check your bills, we use 15 at the most. This is 120 times that. And I have to scream so loud. Well, about the waterfalls, I think you've understood everything. You must see them, feel the drops on your skin, hear the three. Such closeness to nature, they give birth inside you. Basically, the sites of Iceland are created by nature, but there are some exceptions. Almost all tourists like to make a pilgrimage to the wreckage of an airplane that fell on a deserted beach. It's a long walk, but hopefully it's worth it. And it took me so long to get here for this rusty piece of iron. But after a couple of minutes, I realized what the thrill was. It's really cool that you can climb up here. This place is known as the airplane that everyone takes pictures of. The landscape around here is kind of scorched, but there's no sadness because I know no one died in the crash. The conclusion is one, if you have free time, you can come here. Animals and birds are the one thing, or rather who, I never doubted. The wild world is beautiful always and everywhere. Iceland has a special breed of horse. They're characterized by these bushy bangs. I call them the horse with hair. Here you go. Iceland is one of the most horsey places on earth. For every 364,000 people, there are 80,000 of these sweet faces. It's second in the world after Mongolia. Horses here are very fond of lying on the ground. The first time I saw one, I thought the horse was dead. Also in Iceland are gorgeous sheep that graze right along the roads, but sometimes you can't get near them. Here I filmed one of these runs. It's not even possible to take pictures of the sheep. You can't get out of the car. You're driving on the road and you really want to photograph every empty lot, every house, even the road is very scenic. But why in Iceland do they have these roads so that you can't stop, you can't go right or left, there are no, you know, stretches to pull in, to enjoy, I don't know, take pictures. And then there's the deadfall on the island, 60% of the world's population by the way. Meet Cape de Hovel, which means door opening. And that archway over there is the entrance to the secrets of the island. Let's go look for dead beats now. They're also called sea parrots and birds with very sad eyes. They remain faithful to their mate throughout their lives. Maybe that's why they have sad eyes. Okay, that's a joke. There are very few places in the world where you can see dead birds because they nest in hard to reach places and spend part of their time in the ocean in general. And to be able to get so close to them in Iceland is a miracle. And look how many people gather for this spectacle. Weather. And here with Wales, another tourist attraction, I was not lucky. For their sake, I went to the town of Akureyri. 
There you can get on a boat that will take you to the whales. The sun, it's so nice. I can't believe it. It's 16 degrees outside and it's like that, you know, in Iceland. That's a real Icelandic summer. Usually it's so cold here, they even put garbage cans on. You'd think the sun, the sea, what could be cooler? But here I saw tourists returning on a boat trip. People don't have the happiest faces. I don't know if they've even seen a whale. We'll be lucky. I'll tell you, if this was my first whale hunt, I'd be very disappointed. I've seen them in Kamchatka and Antarctica, of course. Uh, it's frustrating, but not to the point where it's like, hands down. But... Of course. There's not a lot of whales here. I saw literally a couple pieces of tails, and that's it. here but I decided to pay attention to two. One is known for its color, it's black. The other with diamonds. Remis Fiara Beach for starters. Why is it black? The mystery is simple. It's not actually sand but a mixture of ground stones. Icelandic rock is lighter than a grain of sand. That's the tough nature here. It'll grind everything up. This is where the iconic Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones and Star Wars were filmed. The tolerant sand has clearly caught Hollywood's attention. Mine, frankly, too, but it's very unusual. This beach is among the wettest in the world. It rains here almost every day. But few people know that behind this peaceful picture can lurk deadly danger. There are killer waves out here, and I'm not kidding. In 1916, a tourist from China decided to take selfies. Suddenly, one wave came ashore and washed the man into the sea. No one had time to save him. Locals, hearing such stories, often say, this is the work of a troll. Legends about these fabulous creatures abound here. Trolls once lived here instead of people, and one day they decided to steal a ship from the owls. But they didn't make it before sunrise and the sun turned them to stone. And the arm of one of the trolls is still sticking out of the water. According to Icelandic beliefs, trolls are descended from giants who lived on Earth before humans. They can do magic, steal, and eat children who misbehave. They also always have a very big nose. So here's a warning. Unfortunately, you can't go swimming. You'll only survive for a few minutes. another beach, Diamond Beach. Hollywood producers know about it too, especially those who organized the filming of Mondiana. It's where they shot a view to a kill and die another day. The beach is dotted with gemstones. The diamonds here, of course, are not real. They melt in my hands. You know, it's like a Cinderella story. Come midnight, the crystal slipper disappears. They're crushed iceberg fragments. It looks real. supplier of all this beauty? A glacier with yet another unpronounceable name. There it is. I think the beaches are crystal clear. It's a beauty not to be missed.
Iceland brochures are bound to have words, Martian landscapes. Local nature is so unusual that you can feel yourself on another planet everywhere. There would be a desire, but two places are considered truly Martian. The first is Kerit. Lake Kerith, the one below, is clearly a favorite of conspiracy theorists. Because it's so perfectly round, it couldn't have been created by nature. So it must have been done by aliens with circulars. Kerit is a lake in the crater of a volcano. It has such an unusual color from the calving. And it is the only attraction in Iceland that they charge money to pass. Kerith crater is also known as the eye of the world. And that eye is, for a second, three, zero years old. But by Icelandic standards, it's a child's age. The local lakes are much older. And the second Martian place is Lake Mowatan and its surroundings. Mewatan is called one of the strangest places on the planet, and all because the craters and pseudo-craters give this place an extraterrestrial look. And in Icelandic, Mowatan means mosquito lake. But surprisingly, I haven't met a single mosquito yet. Perhaps they just hid from the strongest winds. If you've been here, post in the comments what's up with the mosquitoes here. These are places many of you have seen. The Night's Watches trek over the wall from the TV series Game of Thrones was filmed here. Also, Mowatan is known as a home for feathered birds. Thanks to the heat from the volcano, the lake stays warm even in the worst of frosts. That's why there are so many birds here. There are more ducks on Mutven than anywhere else in Europe. Everything around the lake is bubbling and smells of rotten eggs, from the hydrogen sulfide springs, of which there are many. These are the mud pots where the clay mass gurgles. The earth seems to breathe. It's beautiful, but you can't stand it for long because of the smell. And these things are called fumaroles. They're holes where volcanic gases come out. Volcanoes, geothermal vents, warm lakes. At every turn, the earth is trying to keep people warm. And they're not stupid enough to take advantage of it. In Iceland, there is no central heating in the usual sense for us. Houses are heated by hot water from geothermal wells. Pipes with hot water are laid even on sidewalks and in parking lots so that they do not have to clean them in winter from snow. I've never seen better weather anywhere, not even in Antarctica, not even in Siberia. Here, for example, is a classic view from the car. How can you enjoy the beauty of Iceland here? Well, you can't see anything at all. Well, you can't see anything at all. Oh, a sign. Oh, cyclists out of the fog. God, poor cyclists. What desperate people, eh? Iceland is Russian roulette. Your weather luck determines what you see and what you can enjoy. What's to smile about? I'm frozen. Iceland is beautiful, of course, but probably in warm. Weather. What cool weather we're having today. The sun came out, no rain, and I think that's actually quite rare for Iceland. So it's not surprising that all the people are out. The weather. Considering it's also a day off, I honestly don't understand how people live here. Having a summer like this? Here's what you need to know. Walking in Icelandic weather. Five minutes ago it was sunny and now it's... It's raining a pretty good rain. Today we're on the 23rd of July and it's about 14 degrees outside. And that's what summer is like in Iceland. July and August are the hottest months. And whenever you come here, it's going to rain in wind. More importantly, the rain interfered with my plans to see a volcanic eruption. So, just imagine, I was on the other side of the island when the eruption started. The epicenter is only 30 kilometers from the capital. I dropped everything and drove there. I got there, but the weather got in the way. There are guys standing there. Some service warns that it is impossible to climb the volcano now because the weather is bad. Well, you can see for yourself how foggy it is. It was unclear when the road to the volcano would be opened. But I'm stubborn and I couldn't miss this sight. I decided to wait for my time no matter what. And I did. 
Of course, I expected that there would be a lot of people because the volcano was closed for so many days. But so many! It's brutal! The main rule of safety when you climb the volcano, you cannot step on the frozen lava, even on the frozen lava, because the crust can break, and it's, pardon me, one 500 degrees. It's been asleep for 6,000 years and only woke up last year. There were over 50 zero earthquakes before the eruption in just a couple months. You see last year's lava, and it's still smoking. Now this huge field will be devoid of life for a few hundred years. You know, I feel like I've come to a movie theater somewhere, sat down and watched some blockbuster. It's all happening on the screen, there's some explosions, I don't know, vigilantes maybe. Like a real tourist, I took sausages with me, I took marshmallows to roast over the volcano, and this man here won't let me go up there. He says it's dangerous, it's not allowed, and he won't budge. Can you imagine? But we remember that I know how to wait. At some point, the inspector left and I decided to take advantage of it. The most dangerous part is that he's moving all the time. Man, I'm scared to go near it. It's really no joke. And it's really hot. Lava is three times denser than water. So if you jump into it, you kind of don't drown, you just burn on the surface. I think the first time in Iceland, I don't care about the rain. Let it pour, let it flood. But look at what's going on out there. It's like a photoshopped image. No, on the rain, if you leave, I'd appreciate it. You walk up to the lava and you're blasted with heat. But that's not unusual. Its temperature ranges from 300 to 1,500. Pizza is baked at 300 degrees. We ended up baking a drone. Basically, we melted the drone. That's a lot of footage. We launched a Minic 2 on purpose. A good expensive drone was not touched. But uh, it's a wonder it's come back at all. This volcano has been dormant for far too long. Scientists say it and other local volcanoes will be hyperactive in the next hundred years. They will make the island a dangerous place. Dangerous as hell and beautiful as hell. You know, this is probably where I want to summarize the Icelandic trip in general. Iceland is a very rugged country and a very beautiful one. But unfortunately, sometimes it hides behind fogs, behind rain. And sometimes it gives you such beautiful gifts. And these gifts will stay with you for the rest of your life. Believe me, this one will never be forgotten. And you subscribe to the channel, give me likes, and remember, with me, you'll miss places you've never been. Bye. Bye.